Can you do that? Uh, I had to ice myself after watching the video <laughs> the first time I saw that. Uh, that that was uh, looked painful, but she does it with such ease and grace. Well, there's a reason she's got millions and millions of followers on social media because she can do it and we yeah, can't. There it is. Right? Yeah, so excited to share that story with you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show here on this Thursday. I'm Eric Connor. I'm Stella Escobedo. Let's go ahead and check in with Netta now for a look at our forecast. If you're going to go do that, do that right now because you're going to burn a sweat. Mm -hmm. it's gonna yeah, be hot. practice doing that outside at the beach. That would be a great spot. She's from San Diego. So yeah, this is probably one of her training grounds. I mean, hey, why not if you can do it? Uh, this is our view at Cardiff State Beach. And yes, you do see the overcast conditions again, very similar to yesterday. In fact, so today temperatures will feel nice by the coast. We have the marine layer. Look at that kind of snaking around our mountains right there. This is San Miguel's view. Your weather headlines seasonal along the coast. What does that mean? Mid upper 70s. It should feel nice. Still warm inland, so a lot of low 90s around. And then we're looking at a hot day for the mountains and deserts again before we cool down for the weekend. Checking on traffic here this morning, and it looks like so far no major slowdowns. Uh, there is a crash right here, this one uh, near the 125 exit at Grossmont in the Mesa area. So if you're headed uh, towards Mount Helix, that region right there, it does appear to be slowing down a little bit here on the 125, and that's kind of it. And then one at Creek Road, this is way up north by Vista, a stalled car at Hidden Oaks Trail. Stella and Eric. This morning, new insight into the fire that destroyed the USS Bonham Richard and the sailor accused of starting it. An attorney representing the sailor is opening up about the charges. This comes as new court records describe the sailor as a Navy SEAL dropout who didn't even like the military. News 8's Evan Ronnie live outside Naval Base San Diego now with a closer look at these developments. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. That's right. These are newly unsealed documents, as you mentioned, that give us a little bit more context into what led to that fire on the USS Bonham Richard. And this, of course, comes as his attorney, the attorney representing that 20 year old sailor, says that he is innocent of these crimes, that he's proud of the time that he served in the military. All while these court, uh, court documents uh, paint this man as a, a, a Navy dropout, really, a Navy SEAL dropout. So take a listen to what his attorney had to say about the events leading up to uh, that fire fire on that ship and why he believes that his client is innocent. You know, it sounds to me like there may be some hesitancy on the sailor's part. He claims that he saw my client. You know, during COVID, the crew was all required to wear masks. So take a look at the photo on your screen. This is sailor Ryan Sawyer Mays included in that newly unsealed search warrant. I love the smell of napalm in the morning as the caption Mays posted with the photo one month before the fire below deck, likely a reference to that movie Apocalypse Now. In the warrant, Mays is described as a Navy SEAL dropout who hated the military, a claim Mays defense attorney disputes. According to the search warrant, a fellow sailor was, quote, 90 percent sure that he saw Mays carrying a bucket while going down into the area of the the ship where the fire started right before flames broke out. The 20 year old suspect was initially taken to the brig at Miramar where two sailors claimed that they heard him talking to himself saying that he was guilty. Now this is in direct contrast with what his attorney says. He says that his client has always asserted his innocence along the way. There's also information in those court documents related to what seems to be uh, Mays possibly having tried to stop uh, the fire hoses from being able to turn on or be able to spray water. So in, in, in fact, trying to stop the firefighting efforts once that fire began. But again, so far, there is uh, only that evidence in these uh, search warrant documents as well as these uh, unsealed documents that give us a little bit more context. Uh, this uh, sailor still is not in custody right now. He's been released from custody. So this is still an ongoing investigation that will likely require more information and a lot more context related to uh, what possibly could have led to the destruction of the ship and billions of dollars uh, worth of damage to the USS Bonham Richard. Uh, outside of the Navy base, I'll send things back to you. Evan, thank you. After more than 40 years of chasing dead-end leads, detectives believe they have identified the person who raped and murdered a 20-year-old Santee woman in her home in the 1980s. By tracing family lineage, they linked DNA evidence collected at the scene of Michelle Wyatt's murder to one-time neighbor John Patrick Hogan here, who died 17 years ago. Investigators are asking anyone who may be able to shed more light on this case to call Crime Stoppers.
This morning, sample mail ballots start going out now that the first recall debate is in the books. Four out of more than 40 candidates took to the stage yesterday. News 8's Chris Groh joining us live outside the county registrar voters with what we need to know. Uh, Chris, the front runner, Larry Elder, no show. Caitlyn Jenner also. Governor Newsom not, not there as well. No, just four candidates, but again, it still was a pretty lively debate covering a range of topics, including COVID-19. That really was the big one, but let's show you exactly who was there, and you might recognize one of those faces, San Diego, former San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner. He was on stage last night with former gubernatorial candidate and businessman John Cox, who actually lost to Governor Gavin Newsom, but we also saw Assemblymember Kevin Kiley and former Congressman Doug Osi. They exchanged ideas, again, on a number of topics that range from illegal immigration, the housing crisis, Governor Gavin Newsom's tenure, as well as, again, COVID-19 and vaccinations. In fact, it was the very topic of vaccinations that we heard the candidates handle exactly how they would handle vaccine mandates, but then also what they would encourage voters to do, Californians to do, when it comes to the vaccine. Take a listen. Look at what other states have done. I mean, I compare California to Florida. Uh, I have two nephews that, that live in Orlando. They were able to go to school the whole time. My view here is that instead of giving people mandates, we need to give them options. I believe in personal choice. I urge everyone to get vaccinated. Vaccinations is how we get our way out of this. I'm vaccinated. My family is vaccinated. Now, for those of you that are in favor of someone like Larry Elder, wondering where he could have been, because again, he is leading the early polls. Well, he was at a fundraiser. And then, of course, Caitlyn Jenner, probably the most well known amongst all the candidates. She was actually in Australia filming a reality show. Eric and Stella. All right, Christopher, thanks for breaking all of that down for us here this morning. Also new Moderna saying people who receive both doses of its COVID vaccine will need a booster shot before winter. The company says it is its vaccine is still 93% effective after six months of the second dose, but says antibody levels are likely to wane. So right now, federal officials are not recommending booster shots. The county is getting closer toward its vaccination goal. Officials say more than 2 million San Diegans are now fully vaccinated against COVID-19. That's nearly 72% percent of San Diego's ages 12 and older. The county's goal is to vaccinate 75 percent of eligible residents. Health officials estimate about 86,000 more San Diegans are needed to reach that vaccine goal. California's largest active wildfire has just destroyed a town in Plumas County. When we say destroyed completely, this town is now gone. The U.S. Forest Service says it took about three hours for flames to take over the town. This is Greenville. The area was under mandatory evacuation orders. About 435 square miles burned, making it the state's eighth largest wildfire on record. It is only 35% contained. Netta, you were tracking this fire yesterday. You were actually tweeting about it. And then what, eight hours later, the town is completely gone. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, in the overnight hours, it was late last night when they were saying, everyone get out of Greenville. And then this morning you hear that, you know, the town was gutted. You saw in that footage. And unfortunately for Northern California, there's a uh, fire weather warning, red flag warnings, as you see. I was looking at their forecast for today, 35 mile per hour gusts but relative humidity single digit. So they're looking at 7% humidity in those areas where that fire is still burning and it's still going to take over a lot of that vegetation, unfortunately, because that's what they're battling against those strong winds and dry vegetation. And it is hot for Northern California as well. That Dixie fire is actually right near Lake Almanor. So right around there near the California Nevada border north of Lake Tahoe, a beautiful, beautiful part of town uh, with so many beautiful trees that are usually lush and green, but that is not the case this year. Look at all the warnings across California right now. Excessive heat warnings to the south. Of course, we still are under that in our desert communities. Heat advisory for much of our inland areas through 8 o'clock tonight, and then that should expire after we start to notice a little bit more relief. Uh, so Otai Mountains camera, here we are. The sun coming on up right now. It is clear, as you see, on the east side of our mountains. Not so much the story on the west side. Oh, no, we still have that patchy fog, especially in Fallbrook right there. That's one of our trouble locations this morning. So take your time. If you're going through Fallbrook, Escondido area, you'll likely run into some of that fog too. Visibility is fairly low in the South Bay at seven, six for El Cajon. So 
overall the marine layer sitting somewhat low. This, of course, you can see it right there, Mount Soledad's view, where it's kind of covering uh, the, the homes right there on the top of the mountain. 68 degrees by the edge of the water. Inland, 63 Poway, 62 Alpine, 59 Ramona. Compare that to 89 in Borrego Springs. You can tell even overnight, not much relief for our desert communities. Afternoon highs today will be slightly uh, cooler than yesterday, not by much. We're looking at a lot of no low 90s for inland communities, but at the beaches, mid to upper 70s. A check of traffic. What's happening here? Well, this uh, spot just popped up on the 52, so I'll start with that one and let you know about a crash that just occurred there. Uh, this is at Convoy, so really close to our station, in fact. So the 52 eastbound at Convoy, if that's part of your commute, just know that you might see some law enforcement out there. And then this also uh, crashed at the 125 westbound. That's right at Grossmont Boulevard, so that one popped up about 30 minutes ago, so they'll still work to clear it, but it does appear to cause a little slowing. You see that yellow right around the scene. Stella and Eric.